Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song. You are good, good. Oh, 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 let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails. The anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my song. You are good, good, oh, you are good. Well, thank you for joining us on another uh, time together in this uh, digital format of having church. And we're grateful that you are spending this time with us. We know that uh, that there's a lot of different churches you could watch and a lot of things happening. So that you took the time to take a break and to really focus in on the Lord. It says a lot of good things about you. I'm John Dobbs. I'm the preaching minister for Forsyth Church of Christ. This is Daniel Kirkendall, our associate minister. And we're really glad that you are spending this time with us. And we hope that you will help us to get the word out by liking and sharing uh, this, this video in your network. But also, we love it when you engage in the comments. So, just say hello or good morning or if, if you're watching in nighttime, good evening. Uh, even if you're watching later and not when it's premiering, you can still leave comments and we'd love to see them. And so we're glad that you're joining in. It kind of lets everybody else know that it's not just me and a computer, but there are a lot of us watching That's together. Right. So, and it's, you know, it's kind of like what Forrest Gump's mom said, life's like a, a box of chocolates. And so when we're able to go back and look at the comments, it's, it's neat to see who all... Um, is here and who all is uh, comment, commenting and engaged. You can further engage with, with us and, and, and you know get involved with what's going on at Forsyth Church of Christ by going to our website at facoc.org. There's a number of things that you can do there to interact. Uh, one of the main things, best things that I think is, is available is a little comment box where you can uh, put your prayer needs if you have those, your physical needs, maybe we can help meet uh, some of those, or you can send in a question or a topic idea that, that we'll definitely get. It's a, it's a direct uh, avenue for communication, so it's not going to be public if there's something sensitive that you need to share 
um, with the church. You can also give online. We definitely encourage you to do that it, in this strange time where we're we're at about 50% capacity on Sunday mornings. Mm-hmm. We still want to continue the work that we're doing um, as a church in our community and with our missions around the world. So please get involved in any way that you can, facoc.org. That's great. Uh, I want to encourage you too that we are still meeting on campus uh, at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings and and that's an opportunity for you to come if you feel comfortable being around a, a crowd. We are socially distanced, and, and uh, we do our best to try to make things as safe as possible. So uh, be sure to uh, come and visit with us, especially if you're in the area and you've never been to Forsyth Church. I think you'll enjoy the friendliness of the experience and just being in the room with some other believers and lifting up your praise and worship. But we know a lot of people are not comfortable yet at this time, and so we're really thankful that you're spending this time with us today. And we're in uh, Genesis chapter 15. If you have a Bible with you, we're going to be looking through a few verses there uh, in a few minutes as we talk about the idea of faith. And I want us to think about our faith and living the life of faith because whenever we are living the life of faith, we are constantly looking toward heaven to, fa- to, to help us as we face our earthly struggles. And so as we go through all the ordeals of life, and, and I know that we've had a lot of ordeals in our parish and here in North Louisiana, but just thinking about what's happening in South Louisiana and now Florida and Alabama coastlines uh, and other storms gathering, Uh, what's happening on the West Coast with wildfires. There's a lot of people struggling with their faith and in their life. And the only way we're ever going to really make it and be strong for, for, for the Lord is to keep looking toward heaven. And I want us to talk about that today because in Genesis 15, Abraham's journey uh, takes a significant turn. I think it's very interesting. Abraham's journey began in Genesis 12 when God called him to leave his home and he promised I'll I'll make you a great nation and I'll bless you and make your name great and you'll be a blessing and Abraham acted in faith he he didn't know where he was going but he followed the instruction of God and uh, his journey contained a lot of challenges if you read just those few chapters between Genesis 12 and Genesis 15 they're pretty action-packed and a lot of things going on. And I'd say maybe almost a decade later, we're in Genesis 15, and Abraham is realizing that God had made him a promise that required him to have a family with children. But that wasn't the case. And so Abraham is, is wrestling with this a little bit. And I want to read that text just to kind of get it in our minds today. So if you have your Bible, Genesis 15, 1 through 6. It says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, Oh, Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you've you've given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and he said, Look toward heaven and number the stars, if you're able to number them. And then he said, So shall your offspring be. And the Bible says, He believed the Lord and he counted it to him as righteousness. Abraham is our great father of faith, and and as he traveled and pondered over what God had promised and how it seemed like it wasn't going to happen, God does answer his concerns, and and I want us to think about how we can learn to continue to grow and to go on in our faith, even when circumstances are very difficult and we're not sure what the outcome is going to be. So uh, what do we learn from the faith? about uh, f- from Father Abraham. What do we learn about faith from him? And so first thing I think we learn is that we listen with the intent to obey. We mentioned Genesis chapter 12 a minute ago, and uh, a few verses there in Genesis 12 says, The Lord said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, your father's family, and go to a land that I will show you, and I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you'll be a blessing to others. 
I'll bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. And all the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed. Now, I know that if Abraham is known for anything, it's listening to God. When I read that verse, it seems extreme. Does it seem extreme to you that he would hear this voice and, and it would call on him to make such a significant change in his life? To go leave where he, his country, where he's known, and, and his family, and his, uh, everything about his life, and disconnect from that and go to someplace else. But not only that, but to go someplace else where he, he doesn't know where. <laughs> someplace un, unknown to him. And so Abram does that. He listens to the word of the Lord. And I think if we're going to have a strong faith, if we're going to have a faith that's going to see us through coronavirus and wildfires and hurricanes and, and illness and whatever else you've got going on in your life, struggles that we all have, I think that the one sure step that we're going to have to do is to listen to the word of the Lord. The Lord's brother James in James chapter 1 verses 22 to 24 said, Don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, you walk away, and forget what you look like. You, you lost the whole purpose of the mirror. Why did you even look? Because one of the things that God's word teaches us is, not only do we need to read it and, and try to understand it, and, but to obey it. And Abraham, being the father of faith and the father of the faithful, reminds us that one of the keys to having a, a strong faith that will get you through every circumstance is to listen and obey the word of the Lord. There's another thing that I see in this text that I think is really important, and that is to replace fear with trust. Replace fear with trust. God says, uh, you know, he talks to Abraham. He says, fear not, Abraham. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very Great. And so that idea, fear not. Did you know that fear not occurs almost 500 times in the Bible? The Bible talks about fear about 500 times. And this word fear not, it keeps coming up over and over again in all kinds of circumstances. But this is the first time that we read that phrase in the Bible. Fear not, Abram. Don't be afraid. You know, fear is a natural reaction to threatening circumstances. I'm sure we've all been afraid of something at some time in our life. Sometimes we have ongoing fears, fears of the dark or fears of spiders. I'll admit to that one. I don't want to be around a spider. <laughs> but fears of snakes, uh, fears of being in a crowd, fears of, of all kinds of things. All kinds of fears can be a part of our life. But it sometimes saves our lives, doesn't it? It gives us a sense of caution, gives us a sense of knowledge that if we do certain things that could be really harmful or hurtful to us. And so we kind of have a, a healthy respect, if, if that's what we call it. But fear is not to be a part of our relationship with the Lord, at least not a, a fear that can be described as being afraid. We are to fear the Lord in terms of treating Him with awe and respect and viewing Him that way, but, but being afraid of God. Having fear in that relationship is not what God wants us to have. So the basis of releasing fear is to trust. And to just say, God, I trust you. I, I know that you have made a promise. And I know who you are. And I know who I am. And I trust you. Uh, Warren Wiersbe said that Almighty God is the only one who can offer you protection and provision to keep his promises. And we think about our relationship with God. He's so trustworthy. And, and we, we do have people that we trust, but human beings are, are fickle. But God is so trustworthy, and He's always there for us. And He says in this passage to Abraham, I don't want you to be afraid because I'm your shield. And that idea of God being our shield is something we see in a lot of scriptures after David was delivered from his enemies and delivered from King Saul, in 2 Samuel 22, he sang a song. And in that song, he said, He is a shield for those who take refuge in him. Sometimes we sing a song in our church based on Psalm 3 in verse 3. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory, the lifter of my head. You give me courage. 
You give me strength because I know that I'm not facing my struggles alone, but you're with me all the way. In Psalm 18 and verse 2, David said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. And, and maybe that's a verse we should memorize when we're going through tough times to say, God, I know that you are all these things, and I need to remember to believe that, to trust it. Maybe that's why in Ephesians 6, Apostle Paul said, In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish the flaming darts of the evil one. See, when we talk about replacing fear with truth, with trust, we're not just saying that, that, well, if you'll do that, then you won't have any struggles in life. God's going to take all your hardships away. There'll be no more tears. Uh, believe me, that's a promise that God makes for a time after our life when we're in heaven. As long as we're here, there will be struggles. There are going to be hurts and pains. But God is our protector. He's our strength. He's going to see us through. What do we learn about faith from Father Abraham? We learn to replace fear with trust. And we learn about what faith looks like when it is normalized. Normalized faith. I think sometimes we look at spiritual giants and we say, oh, I can never be like that person. I could never have the faith that this other person has that is so strong. But when I look at Genesis chapter 15, I realize here's a normal kind of faith. In verse 2, Abraham says, Lord, God, what will you give me? I continue childless. Uh, the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus, uh, a member of my household. I have no offspring. So you made all these promises, and it's been a good while since you made those promises. And I'm getting older, my wife's getting older, and we don't see these promises coming true. See, I think faith normalized means that there are things you do not know. Abraham had come to believe and to know that he couldn't figure out how uh, God was going to work out his plan. He, he couldn't understand it. He tried to work it out himself. He tried to think his way through it. He tried to keep bringing it before God. But ultimately, his faith was normalized in the sense that he, he just, there are things he just didn't know. He had questions and struggles, and God knew about all of those. See, faith is not having a strong faith. Sometimes I think people think having a strong faith means you have no questions, or that you've got it all figured out. Or that you just calmly accept whatever happens and just kind of wait around for whatever God has next. But Abram didn't demonstrate any of that. He was somebody who kept bringing it to God, who kept saying and expressing, God, I don't understand, I don't get it. And that's normal faith. It's real faith. I think when we think about faith normalized, we realize we have many questions for God in our life. How many of you could, at this moment, write down a question for God on a piece of paper that starts with the word, why? Or when? Or how long? Or how? And read through the prophets and the Psalms and you realize you're not alone. Again, Warren Wiersbe said that one of the basic lessons in the school of faith is that God's will must be fulfilled in God's way and God's time. God's not deaf to your questions. He's not unconcerned about your feelings. But he has his way. And it's up to us to keep on believing, even when we can't understand it all. That's faith normalized. Questions, uncertainty, our limited human vision... This is the normal faith experience. What do we learn about faith from Father Abraham? To replace fear with trust, to, to get a picture of what it means for faith to be normalized, and then also for our faith to be activated. For our faith to be activated. And God calls Abraham out, and I, love, I just love this in verse 5. He brought him outside, and he said, Look toward heaven and number the stars if you can. And, and if you're able to number them, just do it. And so shall your offspring be. And so he's looking up at the stars. And, you know, uh, if you live in a city, you don't see the stars like you do if you live in the country or if you're out in sort of an open area without a lot of, of lights. And when you can see the stars from that perspective, there are just so many of them. Somebody said that there, it's estimated there are over 100 billion stars, more than we could ever count or name. And God says, I want you to look at that. And this is God's way of saying to Abraham 
you know, this is who I am. And seeing the creation, Abraham's faith was assured. He, he knew then that he's following a God who's capable of creating this. No doubt he can see me through this season of struggle. Uh, I love how Oswald Chambers talks about this. He said, God's appeal to the stars is not to furnish proof for doubting mind. Abraham wasn't wondering if God was real. He knew God was real. He just didn't know how God was going to do what he was said he would do. So it's not about the stars uh, in, in this text. It's not about furnishing proof for a doubting mind, but to provide nourishment for a faltering faith. And now that I can identify with. I bet you can too. This nourishment for a, a faltering faith. Abraham believed the Bible said he believed the Lord and he counted it to him as righteousness what a gift and that's the same gift that God gives us when we live a life of faith and we put our trust in him and we ex express that in obedience Abraham believed it and, and that idea of belief literally means to lean your whole weight upon to lean your whole weight upon are we leaning our whole weight on the Lord what do we believe about God? How can we put our whole weight on Him? So I'll give you a few ideas about when faith is activated, when we believe. We believe the truth about who we are. You know, for faith to be activated, I think we need to see ourselves for who we are, like James talked about looking in the mirror, and then we don't need to forget what we look like. We need to remember that we're looking, when you look in the mirror, you're looking at a sinner. You're looking at someone who doesn't have the capability to please uh, God to save himself, to overcome his own sin. You are looking at a person in the mirror who is a sinner who can only be saved by God's grace. And God's power to redeem us is what we're putting our faith in. That activates our faith, but it has to start with that idea that, you know, who we really are. But also is activated when we believe the truth about who God really is. And it's not just who we are that matters, but it's who God is, that he welcomes us. I love that picture in Luke 15 of the prodigal son and, and the father running to meet him. And that's the way God is with us. He's running to meet you. He'll come to you. He welcomes you. He wants you to be a part of his family. He saves us. He makes promises that he will keep. And what's going to give us strength in an active, activated faith is that we realize who God really is. And I, I, I love, somebody said, we're not saved by making promises to God. I think we think that sometimes. You know, well, I'll make all these promises to God about how I'm going to change and what I'm going to do different and how, what a different person I'm going to be. That, that can't save us. I tell you, it's by believing the promises of God and who He is that will save us. Faith activated when we believe the truth about who we are and about who God is and we believe what God teaches. And we sometimes people say, you know, I believe in God, but I still want to do my own thing. I want to do whatever I want to do. But when we give our life to God, we're yielding our life to Him. We're yielding our will to Him. We're growing closer to Him and becoming more like Him. And so uh, when we read commands in the Scripture, we don't look at them and say, oh, I don't feel like doing that. We, we say, okay, I'm going to work on doing that and struggle to, to make it happen. So there are a lot of commands in Scripture about believing in God and turning away from our sins, about being baptized, uh, being a part of the church, living the Christian life, being a holy person, loving our neighbor, loving God. There are a lot of things there. And it's our determination to follow God as closely and strongly as we can. So that idea of look toward heaven for the faith that you need to make it through the struggles of each day. That's what I want to encourage you today to do. Look toward the heaven, look at the stars, and realize what a great and magnificent God we serve. Listen with the intent to obey. Replace fear with trust in God. Normalize your faith. Realize it has a lot of questions. That doesn't mean you're weak or you have no faith. It means your faith is, is what it ought to be. And then activate that faith by trusting and leaning on the Lord with your whole heart. I wanted to listen, list one more verse uh, with you today. Proverbs 3 and verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. That's where, we're, that's where we need to head. 
We look toward heaven. And so I want to encourage you, whatever you're facing today, whether it's one of these big issues from the news stories, or it's just something really personal going on in your own heart and your own life, trust in the Lord. Look to the heavens. Count the stars. And let that activate your faith. We're going to take a moment now where we're going to have a communion meditation. Uh, Daniel's going to come and pray with us. If you have communion elements nearby, we want you to get those. And, and uh, we'll have a video. And, and just think about what God has done for us at this time. Thank you, John, and uh, what a wonderful lesson uh, that we can gather from Father Abraham. And, uh, you know, his promise of a, a great nation is something that we get to, to live our life in now because of the blood and the life of Jesus Christ. And so every Sunday at Forsyth, we celebrate the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus in an act of, of communion. And so if you're watching and you'd like to join in on that, it's a, it's a global event. Christians all over the world are, are doing this at, at, this very, at this very day, at this very time, if you're watching this on, on Sunday. So if you will, bow your heads, and I'll pray for it, and then we'll have a short video, a reflective video. Dear God, thank you so much for a gift that you gave that nobody else could give. You give us hope. You give us salvation. And you gave us eternal life through your son, Jesus. And at this time, uh, wherever people are, whatever they're doing, I pray that they're able to, to think about that gift, to think about that, that life that we get to spend with you. Lord, I'm thankful that Jesus came down to earth and, and showed us the way, showed us the way to live life, showed us the way to, to, to get back to you. He lived a perfect life and he died a death that he did not deserve. As we think about that this morning, as we eat this bread that represents that body, help us to strive to be more like Jesus every day. Help us to remember him each morning when we wake up. And Lord, also the, the blood that ran through Jesus' body that represents the life that we have eternally, we're thankful for, for that gift. We're thankful uh, that, that we have that hope through his body and his blood. And as we partake of this communion this morning, the bread and the cup. I pray that our minds go to the cross. I pray that they go to three days after that when Jesus was raised from the dead and give us hope for, uh, for all the things that we do, but especially uh, to be in heaven with you one day. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Bless, bless. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. And age to age she stands. And time is in. Beginning and the end, beginning and the end, the Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb.
Well, thank you again for joining us today, and uh, we appreciate it so much. And I want to have a prayer with you before we go. I, I do want to mention that you can go to our website at facoc.org, and maybe there's somebody who's watching right now who'd like to take some next steps toward being a Christian. Uh, if you'll go to our website, there's a, a link there at the top of the page that says Communications. And you just click on that, and you can send us a, a communication, a prayer request, a, uh, initiate some some discussion we, we'd be glad to talk with you about becoming a Christian or helping you through your Christian life if, if, if there's something we can do for you that'd be a great place to start but we're glad that you uh, were here and we're going to say a prayer and so join with me together God as we join together in prayer maybe several of us at this very moment maybe others watching later uh, maybe even sometime a long time later but but just spending this time, we know that you hear us. We know that you're with us. We know that you care for us. And as we try to live this life of faith, Father, help us to put our whole weight upon you. It's, it's really hard. We, we tend to want to try to trust ourselves more than we trust you. I'm, I'm grateful, Father, for the, the grace you have, the mercy, the patience you have with us. I pray, Father, that you help us to always strive to, to serve you. We pray your blessings upon those struggling in hospitals and nursing homes, uh, especially those with coronavirus uh, around our country. I pray, Father, as we deal with that, that we'll be patient and we'll do all we can. Bless everyone who's involved in research and uh, trying to get a vaccine and some answers for uh, us to be able to move beyond what we're having to do now. I pray, Father, for those struggling and who've lost their homes in wildfires or hurricanes. Uh, I just pray that you'll send Christian helpers to surround them and bless them and give them hope. And Father, whatever the storm is in our life, I pray that you'll help us to, to trust you through it and to put our full weight upon you and your strength and your plan and to know that we don't have to know how it all comes out, but we know someone who does. I thank you again. Bless each person watching in this very moment with just what they need. You are capable, you're powerful, you're strong, and it's in the mighty name of Jesus we make that request. Amen. And if you prayed with us, why don't you go ahead and type amen in the, uh, the chat there, and that'll kind of let everybody know that we're, we all spent that time in prayer together. And uh, I thank you again. I hope you'll join us next time, Wednesday nights at 6.30 and, uh, for our ongoing Bible study. I appreciate Daniel who does a lot behind the camera and on the camera. And so we as a team enjoy doing what we can to bring the Word of God to you. And so we thank you for that privilege. And uh, thank you again for watching. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, good, oh. King of my heart, be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song. Let the King of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my song. You are good, good. Never gonna let, never gonna
never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You are good, good. Oh, you are.